right. So for our next training session for the AFS to I-21 migration is going to cover some of the AR functionality and reporting. So we're going to talk about uh, things like service charges, payments, and uh, common AR reports as well as common uh, card fueling reports just as we have time uh, to, to go through multiple areas. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to start with the AR system and I'm making a couple of quick tweaks here to the menu uh, to show a couple of more different options. Um, uh, this is not something you'll need to worry about here, but just as I'm showing the information, you actually have a lot of flexibility if you've got multiple users who will be in the system, then those each of those users can have different level of control and access. service charge items were not in there. Okay, so as I can log in, I can now see the missing options I was looking for. Okay, so back to what we were looking at was uh, working on the uh, service charges and payments. The prior week, we actually talked about the car fueling invoice and formatting, and typically the service charges are done in advance of that, uh, but they can be done once a month or per billing cycle, depending on your needs. So from here, we can actually set up the service charge settings, and a lot of this will get uh, brought over from the uh, auto fueling system with a base setting for you. <clears throat> but just to talk a little bit about some of the related setup, because there may be some options that you may want to utilize more. Um, one of those options is we can... Uh, have different service charges if they're flat amounts, if they're like you wanted to do a late fee uh, or a percentage is the most typical. Uh, you can also choose whether or not you're going to do that on a daily basis uh, or a monthly basis. So if you notice, there's a, an annual percentage rate that can be converted to a daily rate uh, and you can extend a minimum grace period. Uh, so if somebody made a payment uh, two or three days late and you still wanted to forgive them of any service charges for that, you could extend a grace period uh, to avoid you know, a check in the mail delay. Uh, you can also control uh, the minimum amount of a finance charge you want to offer and the minimum balance that you would do a charge against. So if somebody had a you know, balance of $1, you may not want to do a uh, finance charge on $1. You know, that may be uh, a prior finance charge that they just didn't pay that you're going to write off anyways. So within the service charge settings, that's the core setup. The service charge rates, you can have multiple rates, and they can be assigned to the customers. Uh, if, so if you've got customers that would have either a different APR or a, uh, you know, maybe not give grace period, or, you know, maybe you've got government accounts that, you know, you never service charge anyways because they're, going to have their own payment schedule on when they pay you outside of your terms. Uh, but from within there, you would go into calculate service charges. And typically, depending on when you're calculating this, if you're calculating this per billing cycle, this as of date would be your billing cycle date. Or if you're calculating it once a month, uh, you would just put it to the end of the month. You can also use the options on the screen to filter for a specific customer or for a certain status code, which is just a grouping of customers. Uh, 
we have the option to calculate and update those service charges immediately uh, without a preview, or we do have the option to preview before posting. And I'm going to make a quick setting here to get uh, my default uh, location done. It is using a user's default location to create those invoices. So typically that will be set up as your users are set up on the account as well, a default location. And that actually gets used throughout the system if you're trying to put in uh, payments. Uh, and for most customers, you won't have multiple locations anyways. So I'm going to re-log in so it remembers my login there, or now knows my default location. And I go back to 11.30 and preview my service charges now. So when I'm previewing service charges, I do have the ability to see uh, all of the service charges before they're finalized. And then there will be another step in this process that you can actually forgive those service charges uh, if it's a small amount or you don't, uh, you know, maybe somebody just had a, didn't pay it, right? Uh, so you, throughout the process, you've got a preview option, and the benefit of the preview is, you know, you can see who's past due, how much they're past due. Uh, you could see this customer has not paid their bill in forever. Uh, all of the individual invoices that are past due, uh, and the amount of service charges accrued against each one for a total of $1,100. That's uh, quite a bit past due. So from those customers, if we're good with those, we can actually, because this was just a preview, if we close it, it's not been completed. And we can actually go back to customer settings and let's say for this customer was going to collections and we didn't want to charge service charges anymore, we can actually go into the customer maintenance screen and deactivate service charges just for them. Uh, so just to, as we're looking at that process, I'll show you where the customer setting is here in a moment. Um, but assuming we want to continue with this, I will do a process, and this will update those service charges. And you can see here that it created three new service charges to go with those. Uh, you also have the ability to preview these service charges, uh, and then before they get finalized or posted. And then you also have the ability to forgive past. So if you'll notice, the service charge invoice is a preview of what was completed, but it's also showing you, uh, you could come back into this to see a historical uh, service charges as well. So from here, if I go ahead and I'm gonna do the final step to update these, and that is the batch posting of the service charges. And so from here, uh, we've got quite a bit of demo data in the system uh, that's out there. But at the very bottom, I've got my three service charges. Uh, typically, you would not have this much unposted information, but you would be able to select all uh, or just post those particular ones or filter by a certain date. So with those service charges posted now, if we go back into the AR menu to the service charge invoice, we'll now see that those three service charges are posted and we can actually choose to forgive uh, posted service charges only. So in this one, we've got this option here. It's not for been forgiven, but if I select that, hit the forgive button at the top, then it's going to mark that and reverse out the service charges on that customer's account. These service charges will show up on the statement for those billing cycles, so that's why this is typically done in advance of those customers um, of sending the statement. So if there was any new finance charges to be included, uh, you know, you'd want to calculate those first and then send them on the statement. Any questions on service charges? Uh, I had one other thing I was going to show, the customer-specific settings. So 
on the customer screen, there's a customer tab with the settings and under the miscellaneous detail, you can control service charging here. So we started out by looking at the different service charge rates that are available. Uh, if you leave this blank, then there'll be no service charges calculated, or you can populate that uh, to the specific service charge code they would want. So if this was somebody I no longer wanted to calculate service charges on and I had just forgiven them in the past, uh, I would just blank that out and save that information. So then from here on the audit log, we can actually see us, you know, the old value taking off the service charge code uh, to a new value of it being blank. Service charges can be forgiven at any time as long as they have not been paid. So if you wanted to turn around and forgive a new service charge uh, at a future date or cleaning up an old past due account um, that you finally collected on and wanted to forgive the service charges, that is another way of you know, coming in here and just selecting one of those accounts and hitting the forgive option. So all of these service charges, you'll notice, have a prefix of SC for service charge. So the next area, um, let's see if there's any questions on calculating or producing service charges before I move on. Okay. Uh, next area I want to cover on the AR is receiving payments. There is two options for receiving payments, and most customers prefer to use the individual payment. Uh, but you can also receive multiple payments at one time. And so I'll, I'll show you this one briefly and then I'll jump to the next uh, option here. Uh, but the receive multiple payments, this is giving us all of the customers at once. So if you notice, anybody who's got open receivables is going to show up on this grid and you could filter it down. So if I was looking for uh, all you need quick stop, who obviously had some finance charges, so they're gonna have quite a few options and invoices out here. We can see here's the service charge that we just calculated, and then here's their prior invoices. So you could filter and find customers in an entire amount, or if you're somebody maybe sent in an invoice uh, for a payment, uh, and you didn't know who the customer was, but they gave you the invoice number, you notice you can also filter here for a specific invoice number two. So here's that uh, sales invoice 415. Here we have that invoice number uh, and the amount you can search based on any of those columns. So it does provide a lot of benefit there. Uh, the challenge with this screen is sometimes it gets confusing uh, to users that they're seeing everybody's payments at once and they want a more simpler screen where they're only applying a payment to the one customer that they're working with. So while this receiving multiple payments from multiple different customers is available to you, I find most users tend to gravitate towards the simpler screen, uh, which is just the receive payment screen. Uh, this starts out with a grid of all of the payment history. And then if we go to new, uh, I'll again pull up the customer all you need quick stop. And from here, you can see our payment location defaulted in. Uh, there's various payment types. If it was paid with cash, check, uh, you know, if there was credit cards, uh, you know, you have multiple options available here. And we can put in the amount to be applied. So if we have, uh, I'll just partially pay off some of this customer's account. Let's say they. They're catching up in slow payments. We put in 20,000. You notice it's starting out with a unapplied amount. Let's say this was for check number one, two, three, four, five, six. You could put in notes about this payment. And then you have the option to apply this on account automatically to the oldest first. That's this option at the top here. And so you notice it'll find based on the due date of each of those invoices and apply that 20,000 until the full amount has been used. So you can see some of these have already been partially paid in the past. 
uh, or they're paying down a payment amount against those. Uh, or I can clear that and tell it I don't want to apply an account, and then I can manually apply it. So if I want to be very specific on what invoices are paid, if I click on any of the payments in this grid, I can, you'll notice it'll default to automatically paying the remaining amount due on that invoice. So if we want to jump around and pay off that service charge and pay off some of these amounts, uh, you can see where you know we still have some remaining amount left and eventually it's going to apply all of the amounts until it goes down to zero. Uh, so with those different payments, uh, you know, you can really, you know, select all, clear all. Uh, that works very similarly to the amount at the top, uh, the apply the account. Uh, but then you also have the ability to go directly into a, a payment. And if they wanted to put a thousand against this one, uh, five thousand against this one, and you know, put nine thousand against this one. You know, each one of those payments as they add up, and I still got 5,000 more to go, uh, you could control that distribution however you like. Uh, so a lot of flexibility within this screen. And then from there, if we save those payments, and then we would then turn around and we can either post these payments individually uh, or we can just go right on to the next customer, the next payment, and then I'll show where we could do a batch posting of that. Um, usually you get a big stack of checks from that came in the mail and you're uh, just posting them all at once. This one's gonna be a cleaner customer and I'm just gonna apply it against their account. So you can see fully applied, total invoice amounts are paid off. And then, again, we can either post them individually or we can batch post them. So as we're looking at this and we put in all our payments, uh, we'll see here we can filter for unposted transactions. And I'm just creating a filter to remind me that you know, if I always want to see my unposted transactions, I'm posted payments first, I can see those, or I can see the entire payment history for all payments. And if I look at the transactions, if I add an additional filter here for the 28th, those are just the ones that I've added today. Uh, so from here on the AR menu, again, there's a batch posting option. And that batch posting, if I click on batch post, I can then go in and see all of the unposted transactions that are available. Uh, but if I were to filter this down to just today's date, uh, then I'll see just those two payments. I can select all of those payments and then can turn around and post those transactions. Is there any questions on the payment entry process or the two different screens with the different options for receiving against one customer at a time or receiving against multiple customers? Good question, or er, er, Janelle, on that one for the discount taken. Uh, as I was showing that, let me reopen that payment for a moment. Um, so these two customers I picked from actually did not have a discount available to them, uh, but you can see, actually, no, that's not true. This one does have a discount available. So from this one, we actually took that discount to pay off that amount. 
So here you see the service charge had no discount, uh, but this one we allowed the $7.75 discount to be taken, and then the net payment. So this 193 actual cash paid plus the discount taken of 775 adds up to that uh, total, and there may have been a prior pay partial payment against this invoice if they don't add up fully. Uh, and you can always see that, you know, this customer, Cedric Noble, so I'll just look at their payment history for all of their payments. And you can see on this invoice, uh, prior payments made, when they've been made, and if they had any additional, what invoices they paid. last area here just to show uh, if you're posting them uh, and this is a another key area of the system you know as we're posting and making these payments and we can see what's out there to be paid uh, we can actually when we're posting it uh, see the post history of when it's been posted uh, the auto log of who and when they did it uh, but you can also unpost this so for example, if this transaction was done on, was actually received on November 25th, I can come into the payment, uh, you know, unpost that payment, change the payment date, and then repost that payment. So that makes it very flexible for you to be able to, um, you know, track the account, what's going on with it, and you know, making corrections. If this check number was wrong, you don't have to reverse a check and re-enter a new check. You can just unpost it to process it. Um, and you'll see that unpost option available in many processes in the screen and card fueling on transactions, um, or if it's been on miscellaneous adjustments, uh, different invoices, credits for miscellaneous adjustments you might do. I'm actually gonna show that next uh, in this process. So as we've been talking about the transactions, most of your information is going to flow through card fueling, uh, but then we also have uh, for miscellaneous billing type purposes, you can create adjusting adjustments on account through this invoicing screen. And so you have the option to <coughs> create invoices or credit memos on their account, and that just depends on whether or not you're extending it. I've seen customers give, uh, you know, special discounts to customers for, um, you know, maybe they buy fuel from them, but they also offer free advertising or something. So they may write off a portion of the account to accommodate for some of that unique business relationships. Um, but, you know, basically this screen can be used for primarily for adjustments. Anything related to card lock transactions from Pack Pride or other networks uh, should really go through the card fueling menu. Uh, but if we look at just entering in a credit memo, and I'll put one on this quick stop customer, and you'll notice most of the information will default from that customer settings, you know, what the bill to address is, ship to address is, uh, any of that information and we can go into item numbers. And usually, if we're doing item numbers, uh, this is not typically gonna be your products, but you might have um, miscellaneous. So for example, maybe this is your own trucks and you're writing off fuel expense. That might be one example of a, uh, a credit that you would offset an account. So <clears throat> you would have different items for these different adjustments. We would help get those set up for you in the, uh, as you need them. Uh, but then that price you know, can be the total amount of the adjustment. So here, if we're gonna hit fuel expense for $500 for the account for that period of time, uh, we can save that. And if there was multiple types of adjustments we wanted to do on one, we could actually put multiple adjustments there. We can also put comments uh, so if we wanted to be able to print out uh, invoice detail adjustment to them, uh, that information. So 
so we can show that fuel expense adjustment here. And I'll just go ahead and print a copy of this credit memo just so you can see what some of the formatting looks like. So here you can see, you know, contact information on from your company would be at the top. We can also get a logo to show up here, uh, you know, who it's being sent to, billed to, and then any details of what that discount is, and here's that comment I put in. Uh, again, this is something we can post individually as we create them, or we could go back to that batch posting screen. Um, so I'll post this one individually. It just depends on how you want to review it. You know, typically if you have a stack of paperwork that you're reviewing, uh, the data in uh, like checks are very commonly done as a batch posting because you want to see the totals of that batch of how much you're going to deposit at the bank account, whereas miscellaneous adjustments might be posted individually as you go. Uh, but this same transaction, again, has the unpost option. So if this, we saw this was $500. Uh, but we actually had a mistake on there, and it was only supposed, it was actually supposed to be 550. We can save those changes, repost those changes, and then we'll actually see the. I'll show the post history here, what it looks like when you process through that transaction. So you can actually see the ins and outs of the corrections, even though we allow you to make the adjustments. So here it was originally posted, there's the unpost, and here's the final posting with the corrected amount of 550. Uh, we're keeping a GL audit log of the ins and outs, as well as, um, again, the who changed it on the audit log that you'll see throughout the software. Uh, on most of the screens, you'll see that audit log of what fields changed and by whom and when. So, Probably the most unique thing about the credits or the different adjustments uh, comes down to the items. And just, you know, if I go in here one more time and look at some of these fields and settings, um, you know, these items are all maintained and defined. Um, these are ones that I had in the sample database. Um, but this is something that's quite a bit different than auto fueling. Auto fueling just had a miscellaneous adjustment and you could put in a comment for the adjustment type. Uh, this is a little bit more, uh, you know, meant to be simpler on data entry so that you, you do a little bit more setup up front, but it makes it easier to categorize your adjustments and run reports on them later. So that means something like this fuel expense, if we wanted to, a lot of this one, but if we go into our inventory module, we can actually go into the inventory items. And as we look, I'll bring up that fuel expense item. Probably the easiest thing to do uh, when you're searching for items, or if you want to set up new miscellaneous adjustments, is to be able to take an example of it, uh, take an existing record. And then you would just use the duplicate option. So once you've duplicated a record, you can turn around and have this be uh, uh, looking for a creative miscellaneous. So. <laughs> there we go. So you can just very quickly save one, duplicate it. And if you did want to have different GL impact, you can control and set up chart of accounts uh, to have different impact along the way. Uh, so this one's actually going into some of the uh, different GL accounts here for freight income or for sales. And if I go back into sales and do an back to the invoicing screen, I can do a new miscellaneous adjustment. And we'll actually see now where that new item I created is part of this list.
So here's miscellaneous adjustment. And I'll just finish out another one of these miscellaneous adjustment for $10. Uh, this is actually adding $10 to that customer's account because we are invoicing them as an adjustment instead of crediting them back. So that's probably one of the other important things to remember here as you're doing it is, you know, the type. Uh, you know, you can have invoice and credit memo are your most commons. Uh, I don't anticipate you're going to have cash sales or cash refunds uh, that you would be putting in those types of adjustments. So probably invoice or credit memo is going to be most common for you. Uh, <clears throat> any questions on the payments, service charges, or miscellaneous adjustments we've looked at so far? Okay. If there's no other questions, then I'm going to uh, move on to the next area, which is just going to be common reports. I'm going to review some of the AR reports that are most common, uh, and then I'm going to turn around and go back to card feeling and rerun some of those reports that are um, pretty common as well, uh, or just show different ways of getting information out of the system. So as you're in the sales AR menu for reports, uh, you can actually see how the menu is broken out between you know your setup maintenance in one place, your activities for creating and posting information, and then your reports for getting that detail. Uh, so there's a couple of reports available, but specifically uh, the most common one is the customer aging report. Everybody wants to know who their customers are that are past due and how far past due. There's two report options here. One is a customer aging in summary which is, uh, I'm going to generate some of these reports. So you can put in additional parameters, and you can actually rerun a customer aging as of any date. So if you want to go back in time and see what was uh, a customer aging report as of the end of October 31st, you would be able to do that, and it would calculate uh, based all the, the dates and payments that happen afterwards. It would back into a an accurate customer aging as of a specific date in the past. Uh, or running it for a current one. And then you can also see if we just expand this out a little bit further, we have some additional filtering options on you know, the customer name, if you want to run it for a certain customer, uh, salesperson, type of transaction types, or uh, you know, print people with balances only, or if we wanted to see um, you know, print anybody with a balance, or if we only wanted to see customers who might be a certain past due amount or only customers over credit limit. Uh, so you can you know, tweak those adjustments there to be able to show more information. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this just so we can see the format. So as this report is one that's in summary by customer, uh, you'll be able to note here, you know, the format is a little bit uh, more simplistic because it's just grand totals by customer. So you can see who the customer is, their credit limit, their current AR, and their breakdown uh, across the different buckets for their aging. Any of these reports can be printed uh, you know, print the entire report, print a single page, the current page of the report. You can scroll through the report with these arrow buttons to the first, second, uh, or last page. And you can also save that out to different formats. So if we wanted to save this out to a PDF, we can do that. We can also send this out to an Excel file, uh, CSV, or some of these text formats, some other options as well. So if we were to, you know, open that PDF in another window, you know, we can see uh, more details of that report. 
or we can turn around and save it out to an Excel file. And you'll notice it'll pop up and ask us how we want to save it, what format, and any name. So a lot of that is built into the uh, reporting framework to be able to export into a lot of flexible formats uh, or print or search that document. The other aging report is in more detail. And so, you know, sam similar criteria at the top for filtering. Uh, but you'll notice here, if we go to generate this, this will actually give complete AR details by invoice, by transaction, uh, to the point that, you know, as we're looking at the customer and saying, okay, well, you know, if we've got this much activity, uh, you know, and we want to see all the detail of that balance and how, where that lies, uh, you know, if you're trying to collect somebody, uh, you may want to know the detail of what those invoices are. So this is just an alternative report with the full detail of, you know, here's the invoices owed, uh, any other credits, adjustments, let me go to uh, Cedric. Cedric so that example that payment I put in actually did not post them from earlier so they're still showing some balance due uh, for that customer account for Cedric so again similar information just more detailed that it actually gives the breakdown of each invoice that was actually due There's some other areas we can get into uh, customer inquiry reports, just giving quick recaps of a customer. So if you're looking to produce a recap to a printed report of you know, where that customer's at, their balance, their prior payment, any recap, any credit information, of about them as well for collections or uh, you know credit reference information we'd be able to show all that detail and uh, customer statements uh, you probably will not be doing customer statements from here because you'll be most often doing the embedded statements uh, that's part of the card fueling invoicing billing cycle process it can also include the statement as a cover page. Uh, but at the same time, you may look at invoice history or payment history if you just wanted to see a customer report uh, recapping all of their activity. So I'll just run this for, these are typically ran for a single customer over a period of time. Uh, so I left it wide open, not necessarily knowing how much activity I'm gonna have out there. Uh, but you'll see on this report, you, know, you could filter by a date range as well. But you can see all of their invoices, the date those invoices came, and then any payments that were applied against them. So here this payment uh, 43 was applied to the sales invoice, um, as well as you can see on a couple other ones. So this report is similar to the next report I'm gonna show you, except for this is sorted out by the invoice first and then how payments were applied to a second. Uh, in the case of the payment history report, this flips that order. So it's gonna show by payment how each one of those payments was applied. And again, the, the field options here uh, by date range, when the payment was made, uh, or by different payment methods can be done to try and filter out this data further. So here, if we look at that receive payment 43 that came in with their check number, you can see all of the invoices that that was applied against. So again, these are just common reports. Um, you know, if you're looking for certain types of information or detail about a customer's account, you may be running some of these reports. 
Uh, I'm going to go over to Cart Fueling for some of the transaction history reporting and hit on some of those areas next. Uh, from here, under Cart Fueling, the transactions, if you remember this from prior discussions, trainings, uh, was that this is the screen where you import in transactions and could review and post uh, any pending transactions or what Autofueling called the hold file. Uh, but on the same area, and we try and do this in most places, we want to make the place where you do the data entry uh, very close to where you would do the reporting. So if you notice, there is a post a transaction tab in here, and we can actually see all transactions uh, for a different time frame. I go for last year. Uh, but you can filter this by different uh, anything before today or a lot of different uh, filter options or between and you can put in your dates. So anytime you see a grid like this as a report, um, you know, we consider this a reporting grid and it has a lot of built-in flexibility, uh, meaning that you can sort, filter, and fine tune on any column that's displayed and you can also right click and show more columns. So if I was looking for something to the city of Fort Wayne, I can do a couple of things here. I can drag this filter up here for customer name and then I can type in there what I want to search for. So you can see that says contain city of Fort Wayne. Um, if I clear that out and if I see the value in the grid I actually want, I can actually right click on that option and add a filter. And you see here it'll automatically uh, get that filter there uh, with the value that I had selected. Or if I wanted to drag and drop, I can drag and drop that marble services up here and apply that same filter. Uh, you can also change, you can hide columns, so if a customer number doesn't mean a lot to you, you can hide that column. Uh, if you want to see card number at the beginning and card name next to it, you can rearrange all of these columns, and then you can turn around and save this view, just like I did earlier in this demonstration of the unposted, and say, uh, my favorite transaction. And once you save those, you'll notice that you get a uh, grid over here that goes with that. Um, so the next time you come in here, this post of transactions will refer, uh, revert back to a default view. Uh, but anytime you go look at my favorite transactions, it'll always remember uh, you know, how you had those settings uh, set. So from here, any one of these columns, if you wanted to, search for quantity, products, uh, any one of these options here that are available, uh, you just have a lot of flexibility. And then on top of that, you can actually add in many more columns. So if, remember, I hid the customer number column. I can add fields like price method. Uh, if I want to know how that was priced, or if I want to know the basis that that came from for the pricing, or if I want to see vehicle information, so you can see from all of these options on this grid that are available to show um, quite a bit of flexibility there uh, just to be able to get in some of that reporting. So from here, if you wanted to see how oh, that came from a price profile, uh, you know, you see all that information. Any columns on here, any column can be filtered, any column can be sorted. Uh, or grouped, and then once you have these grids how you want them, uh, you have the ability to export them out to Excel, PDF, text files, CSV, or anything else so similarly. So there you can see that uh, exported grid went out uh, to Excel in a CSV format. and can go right back to the software and filter uh, 
but basically once you've exported it out, you can manipulate it, build graphs, charts, pivot tables, or anything else you might uh, that you're familiar with in Excel or other tools. So we want to make the information easy to search and filter on, uh, but at the same time we also want to make it um, you know, easy to generate deeper reports. Uh, we also have a couple of common reports in summary. So anything in auto fueling that you did with a detail would be this transaction grid. The summary reports, uh, we created uh, unique reports for those. So if you want activity by customer, activity by site, you want to be able to see those types of details. Um, I'll just generate one of these reports here for us. And then we don't have a tremendous amount of activity again in this demo database. Uh, but you can see here a breakdown on summary by site, the site information, its address, uh, and then totals by product and by grouping of product, as well as the either inventory cost or network cost to come up with a profit margin. And then this very similar report, instead of summarizing by site, is also available by customer. I'll just generate that similar report here. So looking at by customer, we can see the customer number, the name, and that uh, primary contact at that company and see their activity. Uh, one of the areas that uh, with the flexibility of the reporting grid on transactions, uh, we did not try to recreate every single auto fueling reports, uh, we found not all customers were using them all, and most of the information was already available on our transaction grid. Um, so as you're playing around with the system, you wanna look at uh, you know, going into the different reports that are available, and uh, because we didn't replicate everything out of auto fueling, I would highly recommend that you look at those uh, reporting options and determine if there's any reports that auto fueling has that you can't quite get the same information out of the system and let us know, uh, and then we'll work to uh, replicate or get uh, similar functionality for those reports. We've just been uh, trying to work on those as they're identified rather than build every single report uh, from scratch uh, to match what auto fueling had when uh, it seemed like more work than probably what was needed for underutilized or unused reports. Any other questions related to reporting, uh, detail, uh, the AR transactions that we've covered today? I'll, I'll hold to see if there's any chat questions or any other questions uh, for a moment or two. But uh, if not, I'll uh, have, we'll upload this recording to our YouTube channel and share that with everybody.